the night of his crucifixion, Jesus had no one but 12 scattered cowards. He was murdered. He then rose from the dead, and before he ascended to heaven, he promised to send the Holy Spirit and told these same 12 knuckleheads who scattered when he needed them most to scatter again. But this time, to scatter into the world, preaching the gospel and making disciples of all the nations. And guess what? They did. It took a while, but now you look at every single nation, and there isn't one nation where the gospel hasn't been preached. You look at every continent, there isn't one continent on this earth that hasn't had hundreds, some thousands of churches planted. God is winning. Nations are being discipled. The Holy Spirit is sanctifying his church and teaching people to obey all that Jesus commanded. It doesn't quite always meet our expectations about what the kingdom would look like, but just as it was in our section of scripture today, when has God's kingdom ever met our expectations? I believe a right view of Jesus as the victorious king, not just spiritually, not just in the already but not yet, but in history, in this earth's timeline, right now and for all time will drastically shift our collective subconscious from one of loss, fear, disappointment, and escapism to one of victory, courage, patience, and engagement. The message of Christ's kingship and victory is meant to be heralded from the mountaintops, a message delivered to a once conquered and enslaved people, a message that the old regime has been defeated and a new king has been crowned, a king that has liberated them from the curse of the old, a king who has ascended to the right hand of the father and now rules and reigns. That message must be actualized in reality, not just spiritually contextualized and downplayed because it's hard to see the progress in our own lifetime. We belong to the king. Our charge is to press the crown rights of Christ, to claim ground already purchased for the kingdom, not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. And it operates in a way which men don't understand. The application in our passage today for us as it pertains to the kingdom is to stop waiting for something to happen outside of what Jesus clearly already said was finished. To begin walking in the victorious kingdom that God has and is establishing, to labor within that kingdom now. Stop waiting for something else. It's finished. The kingdom is here. Christ is king. We are his vice regents, his entrusted builders, his message couriers, his ambassadors, proclaiming the change of guard, announcing the new and glorious ownership. But yet some would disagree and would rather have us hoping for a king who already reigns. They'd have us hoping to become what we already are. They'd have us hoping for power that we already have. They'd have us hoping for an age that we're already in. They'd have us hoping for a victory that has already been won. Hoping to do what we should already be doing. And have us hoping for a kingdom that we're already in. The church is filled with disappointment, confusion, and a kind of agnosticism regarding the kingdom. I think in some ways our outlook on the kingdom has stunted our growth. Stunted our ability to think long term stunted our desire to build and participate with the Lord as his agents, bringing God's kingdom to fruition on earth as it is in heaven. It's caused us to wait for an escape from this world instead of empowering us to engage it. It's harvest time for the truth, simplicity, structure, and clarity that an optimistic outlook on the kingdom gives us. My prayer for our church is that we collectively consider adjusting our lens, casting off the short-term, pessimistic view of the future awaiting a coming kingdom someday afar off and consider a different outlook, one of optimism, hope, and definite victory. He didn't create all of this to forsake it, to burn it all up. He went to great lengths actually to purchase it. He promises the meek will inherit it. It's his and he is faithfully and relentlessly in the process of renewing it. And it may actually take longer than we thought. Our job as his people is to govern our families, govern our churches, our cities, and our nations well, taking dominion over his creation, bringing all things under the submission of Christ, discipling nations, teaching them to obey all that Jesus had commanded, building, casting off all fear, for we build from a position of victory. I know it's easy to get discouraged, but look and consider what he's doing. Look around you and see what's being done. And rejoice, for there is a king on the throne. He has a kingdom and it's growing. And he's called you and I to be his 
agents of renewal with him in it.